Philippines, Canada. Oh, okay. So I think we're, we're live now. Yeah. So oh, there we go. Now we're live. Yes. Now, now we're live. So uh, yeah. Good afternoon, Ken. What's the time in Canada? Uh, it is, well, it's 1 p.m. on the west coast of Canada. It's going to be 4 oh, p.m. on the east coast and 4.30 in Newfoundland. Okay. Yeah. So so I'm here in Sydney and it's, uh, it's 8 a.m., very respectable 8 a.m. This is my second call for today. So pretty standard for me. So 8 a.m. in Sydney, it's like 4, uh, 5 a.m. I think in Perth where Win Hopkins is, but that doesn't matter. We don't we don't worry too much about Perth. They're, they've got borders up anyway. We're not even allowed to go over yeah, they're there. Not so allowed to let you, they don't let you in, do they? No. Exactly. So that doesn't matter. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but seriously, so the topic today is how to become a data analyst. But I, I guess it doesn't, it can be a little bit broader than that. It can be anything about being uh, a data analyst. So, uh, Ken, you want to talk about the different places that we're streaming this and how people can ask questions maybe? Sure, or... yeah. Um, so we're uh, we're streaming this uh, live right now on uh, on Matt's YouTube channel uh, where it will uh, will rest and live uh, after this is all done. Uh, we are also streaming this live on the SkillWave Twitter account as well as my Twitter account uh, as well. So uh, you could be joined in from any of those areas. Uh, if you're looking to uh, to interact with us, ask any questions, send us any tweets or whatever else, um, what we would recommend you do is you actually follow the SkillWave training uh, Twitter account. Uh, maybe we can actually just get the quick slide up uh, on how to uh, connect with us for right now, because that'll actually uh, show you where all the places are that uh, that we can connect. Um, and uh, ideally, if uh, if you can uh, message us at, uh, at SkillWave, um, just don't forget the underscore there. Uh, we'll take any questions that come in as we're uh, as we're doing our show here and try and uh, and try and sort of you know add those into the broadcast. Although I should probably preface that with we're not really here for technical questions today as much as engaging with us on the content that we're uh, on, on topic about. questions today. On topic yes, on questions topic. <laughs> exactly. On topic so. questions about how to become a data analyst. Exactly. So so yeah. So I guess in a way, Ken, we sort of both didn't start our careers as a data analyst. I mean, I, I'll, maybe I'll briefly sort of talk about my career. Some people might have heard about my journey before. I mean, I um, when I first started doing what I'm doing now, I, I did a, a blog on Rob Colley's post at Power Pivot Pro, which is now called P3 Adaptive, and I've done a few podcasts. So some people might have seen that stuff, but I'll give you the the 60 to 90 second version. So I um, I started my working career working at a supermarket. And so in Australia, I worked for Woolworths. And, you know, if you're in the US, that would be like a Kroger or a Publix. I'm not sure what the equivalent in Canada would be for a, a, trip, a typical grocery supermarket, 30,000 yeah, square we, feet. We got the, the Safeways and, uh, and Safeway okay. Foods and Sobeys. And, yeah, exactly. So, so a traditional grocery store, not, not Walmart style, right? So grocery store. Woolworths is a bit different here. And, you know, I did that for eight years. I learned a lot about business and customer service and process. I learned how, you know, there's ways you do things and there's reasons you do things. And then I spent 25 years at Coke. I started as a sales rep and I did various other jobs. But And, and we'll sort of come back and talk about how that sort of contributes on a journey to becoming a data analyst later. But the point is I didn't do an, an IT degree. I didn't do a computer science degree to become a data analyst. I went to the school of business, the, the experiential school of business. I learned about business by working in business. But then I had a couple of little things, you know, the way my brain works, we might jump back to that in a minute. But so what was your background, Ken? Have you got, a, have you got an IT degree? Or? Well, if, we, if we want to go right back to when we first started working, I mean, I, I was delivering pizza years ago, right? So, um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I don't miss those days, I'll tell you. Um, but, uh, but no, I mean, you know, for me, um, I, I had my, uh, my heart set on, uh, at, a, at a young age on being an accountant. So I went to school to become an accountant. And uh you know, I um, I ended up uh, going through uni for uh, for a few years. Uh, ended up working. Um, one of the big things about the degrees that we earned here was you earn while you learn. So you actually worked as well as taking school at the same time. Um, I held a variety of uh, of different jobs. I mean, I spent some time working as the controller of an orchid greenhouse. Um, we actually used to import orchids, uh, Matt, from uh, from Australia, which was uh, wow. Yeah, it was kind of neat stuff. Um, but uh, I ended up spending uh, most of my time in corporate world. I actually ended up working at a, a company 
um, not that far away from where I live now, uh, where I was the controller and eventually the controller and director of IT. Um, so, you know, for me, I mean, my whole sort of way of getting into this whole thing was I, I enjoyed computers, loved working with them, but it was all about learning the accounting side of it. And that ended up going hand in hand with the IT components. And I mean, I did end up managing networks, but I've got no degree in IT. It was just learning mm. on the ground, the, you know, through watching the consultants that we had come in, reading a lot of stuff, enjoying the passion of how to play around with technologies. And, you know, for me, that was the, the kind of piece that was really interesting here was actually blending the IT and the accounting sides together. But I can honestly say that that was never really a formal part of our program. You know, in the accounting world, we learned to debit and credit and capitalize leases and build financial statements. I mean, you know, I, we did learn a little bit about interpreting data, actually probably a lot, but, you know, it wasn't like it was a specific training in how do you go and use tools in order to actually build the stuff properly. So, yeah. And I think this is, you know, I wrote a blog article. I don't know if, if we have the link to that blog article available or not. So, um, so one of the things that Ken and I are going to be doing over the, well, in, in future is we're going to be sharing a lot more um, material. We're going to do it on LinkedIn. And so, yeah, this is the article here. Um, so this is a, a short code skill wave training slash analyst. And it just, it's a blog article where I cover a whole lot of background about you know, how to become a data analyst. So feel free to read that if you'd like some more information. But I think the point is, Ken, that you know, we've come from very, very different backgrounds, but we both had a set of domain experience, right? So your domain yeah. experience was finance. My domain experience was sales and customer service. And we didn't have an IT degree, right? So, but but we use tools that are that you can specialize. You can be an IT specialist in databases. I mean, that's a thing, right? You can be in perhaps less so in Excel, but we'll talk more about that as we go, no doubt. Um, or you know, you said that you did networks and stuff like that, Ken, where you do the formal stuff. But I think the key thing is that when you work in the business, you become curious about how to achieve results because typically you're going to be accountable right for those results and so you then start to think of the tools as tools how can i use this particular tool to help me solve my problem and it's it's a very different approach it's coming almost like a pull right i'm doing a pull versus a, a push where if you're you're working in the tools and trying to deliver materials out to the to the business user i don't know that's how i think about it anyway yeah you know i, I see um we've actually got a a great question um that uh, that we've had come in um from uh, from christian uh, engel which i think is a, a fantastic one to to sort of um, look at is you know do you, do you need a business background or an it background in order to build up the stuff and become a data analyst and um, to me, <laughs> I think that the, the business background is the core piece that's really, really, really important. And it's that, that domain experience around what you're doing. I mean, and if you think about this, I mean, if I take it back to an Excel world for an, for an ex uh, example, and you ask somebody if what they do for a living, they could be really, really, really good at Excel, and they will never tell you that they're an Excel pro. What they will tell you is, I'm an accountant, I'm an engineer. I'm a salesperson, I'm uh, whatever, it doesn't really matter. The big, big component here is that they have this, this domain experience that was their primary job and they happen to do this extra stuff on the side. Now, if you're a database administrator, you got to have an IT background to go and work in database administration, absolutely. Are there people that come into the data analyst world from that world as well? Absolutely, there definitely is. But I think that to me, for getting proper business intelligence out of things, you need to have a business background in your area. Um, the better solutions I see that come out are when there are business users involved in those decisions. It's not just IT that's feeding information. So that, that's my thoughts on that one. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to add to that, and I've sort of talked about this on a few other, on some podcasts and stuff, which I'll come to in a second. But when I worked at Coke, I mean, I learned lots of, techniques at Coke. Now, one of the things that we used to do, so Ken, you said you were a Beano, right? So so you worked in finance and- Beano? Don't you have that term, Beano? No, a I- bean, a, bean, a, bean, a bean counter. Beano is medicine to stop you from getting gas. 
Okay, no, I don't know anything about that. All right, some of these things don't translate well. Okay, a beano is a bean counter, which is, All right. a, which is an account. All right. All right, so you're a bean counter. Now, so Coca-Cola was a sales company. It was, well, uh, sales and marketing, but the, the arm that I worked for most of the time was a sales company. And so we used to get the finance people, like the people in charge of credit control, used to spend a day, a, a month, one day a month in the trade with a sales rep in the car going out and visiting the customers because we wanted them to learn the domain. They had to understand the business to be able to execute their job as a bean counter, right? And so I think that technique is the same for IT. And I want to come back to this other thing that I've mentioned a couple of times before. I think of people as being on a continuum. So if you look at IT skills, I think there's a continuum. And I start at one extreme on the left is, let's say, the CEO, who is a very strategic thinker. The CEO doesn't have a computer on their desk. Um, they've got some sort of personal assistant that does all of the communication for them. Um, very low tech, right? That's, that's, say, a CEO. I'm not saying all CEOs are like that, but just take that person in mind. And at the other extreme, you've got the people that are working on the VertiPak engine, um, you know, so Marius, you know, oh, these yeah. really got the propellers special, on their hats and, yeah. oh, special, <laughs> special people that are doing machine language coding, blah, blah, blah. No one else understands what the hell they're talking about. All right, so this is the continuum. Now, the point is everyone fits somewhere on this continuum. And in the middle is a cutover point. And that cutover point is, do I work in IT or do I work in the business? Now, for me, I was very close to that cutover point, but I worked in the business. But I jumped the line and went, went into IT and spent 10 years working in IT. But the same can happen in reverse. You can start in IT. You can be a business analyst, which is very close to the line. A technical analyst is less close, but a business analyst is very close. That business analyst can jump the line and go and work in the business for five years if they want to. It's those people that I think are most likely to become a data analyst. If you're yeah. Marius working on the Vertikac engine, it's probably not, he probably doesn't even want to become a, um, a data analyst. You know, he's probably, I, I'm not trying to speak for him, but not everyone wants to be a data analyst. Right. No, it takes it takes a special person, doesn't it? I mean, and I agree, Matt, because I mean, you know, for me, I mean, I used to say yeah, I, I had one foot firmly planted in IT and one foot firmly planted in uh, in the accounting, the business side of things. And, and that was what I, I enjoyed the variety of it. Uh, and I also enjoyed the complementary um, skill set that actually came with those things, because, you know, it, it's an unusual person that can actually speak to both of those audiences and be able to translate that language back and forth. And I think in a lot of ways, that's what the analyst is actually all about is taking these these buckets of raw numbers that come out of systems and linking those together to be able to actually distill it into information and actually get something out of it that's actionable. So um, totally agree. I'm in a way just go back in you know 200 300 years ago when um, you know when um, different countries were you know with different languages when you know they were crossing borders and stuff you needed an interpreter someone who could speak both languages to be able to have a conversation. And I think that's, I think it's a really good uh, analogy. Let, let's talk about the skills that we need. So, I mean, if you go back 10 years ago, it was dead easy. If you wanted to be a data analyst, you had to be good at Excel. I and mean, this is your, this is your background, Ken. You want to talk about Excel as a skill? And Oh boy. Um, well, I, so if you're going back 10, 15 years ago, I mean, sure, you had to be good at Excel, although the definition of good I find is, uh, um, murky at best. Um, I would say you need to be good at classic Excel, and I, I just want to make sure that that's a, a very, very clear distinction in what we're talking about here. We're looking at, you know, you needed to be good with formulas, you needed to be uh, good with um, with understanding how to do things quickly, uh, keyboard shortcuts and, and different things that you're using um, behind the scenes, and you needed to understand how to be able to leverage some of the different tools in Excel to work around challenges because you had problems with, you know, importing data that would come in with garbage rows. So you needed a lot of, of techniques like, you know, running a column of numbers down the side so that you could then sort and filter and, and weird little hacks and workarounds like that. Uh, if you, you know, graduated to the next level, you'd discover VBA and, and you'd start coding in, a, in another language. That's actually what really got me hooked uh, with Excel is that, and 
takes me back to the IT side um, is that, you know, I love the programming aspects, but that, that really was when you were working with the analyst side of things is that you needed to build up that skill set. The challenge that I saw there a lot of the times is that that didn't happen. I mean, people would, uh, they'd learn a couple of tricks. Uh, the person next to them would look at them and say, wow, you're amazing. And they would stop exploring better ways to do things. And uh, I think we still pay for some of those sins today, actually, even, you know, when people look at Excel and why they might buy other softwares is because they say, well, Excel can't do that. It's like, no, Excel 2003 couldn't do that. But Excel 365, that's a whole different story when you actually start looking at some of these components and uh, and looking at what actually happens today. So, um, Matt, I'm wondering if we should actually pull up the uh, the article that you wrote, because you've got like six points in there on what it takes to become an analyst. And I'm, I'm thinking that those might be a, a good thing to sort of throw on screen here just as to how this yeah. works, because it's about more than just Excel, obviously. So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I guess so. There they are. There. So we've just sort of talked about. You know, it, so it's still important to learn Excel. I think. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the oh, Excel absolutely. is a great tool, but but you highlighted some of the the challenges um, that have that occur. And you know, one is data cleanliness and stuff like that. And I mean, I'm hoping and thinking that uh, most people that would be watching this either live or or, or after the fact would it would be at least venturing into the Power BI world whether it's with Power Pivot for Excel, Power Query for Excel, or maybe with Power BI Desktop. And so, you know, that's really the next point, point four there is about, you know, Power BI brings something new. I mean, I think the reason Power BI exists, well, first of all, there's been a whole lot of technology changes which makes it possible, um, you know, way beyond the scope of today. But Power BI also solves a lot of problems that traditional Excel had. And, and so when I say Power BI in this context, I actually mean Power Query for Excel, Power Pivot for Excel as well. I mean, both of those tools together are sort of, I don't want to use the word legacy, but they're the Excel, the embedded in Excel way of doing the, the next generation of data analytics. And then there's Power BI Desktop, which is the completely start again from scratch using the newest technology, but the skills are the same, right? And so, um, you know, obviously, Ken, you and I, we've got this company, skillwave.training, and um, and we specialize in these skills. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but maybe if we could just throw up the, um, the link to our, our skillwave um, site so that people, if they if they want to have a look at the training content we've got, I mean, we do have some specials. I guess we'll probably talk about that right at the end, Ken. That we've yeah, got some, I think that makes sense. Um, we'll talk about it at the end. But, you know, if people want to learn these skills, you know, go to skillwave.training. This is what we specialise in. And, and I think, importantly, because we come from the same background that many, um, many budding data analysts do, you know, we understand the process and, and the learning uh, approach that people want, right? So yeah, well, one of the things I find fascinating, I mean, you know, so I'm I'm uh, I'm working through one of my courses that, uh, that that is a live one, which is the SSBI bootcamp, and the in that particular course, um, I've actually got uh, some some people in there that are, are finance people. I've got engineers in there right now, which I mean, I, listen, I don't know anything about engineering except that the bridge needs to stay up when you're driving over it, right? But you know, but at the end of the day, it's still numbers and it's data behind it, and we're using the same tools so the cool thing about what we're doing at skill is we're teaching people to take their domain expertise and teaching them how to build the core skills that you actually have to get into the worlds of dimensional modeling that lead to power bi and lead to uh, all these power technologies uh, in excel and or, or sorry in excel and power bi i mean building things that actually matter to the organization right i mean you know building up some different solutions getting it to the point where uh, you can actually drive some insights and, and analytics out of it um let's see if we can get the skill wave link back up i don't want to leave it just on that specific course because um, we've got all kinds of them out there um as well so uh, matt you've also got you got some cool stuff that you're running out uh, at skill wave as well with your supercharged stuff and yeah, I mean, I just just sort of relative to what you just said or related to what you just said then, uh, Ken, so this course here is the Supercharged Power BI course. Um, you know, one of the things that I've learned when training people, so I, I mean, when I started my business, so coming up to eight years ago now, um, so here's a little bit of insight. When I, when I left Coke, um, Power BI wasn't even a thing, right? No such thing as Power BI. There was Power Pivot for Excel. Power Query was just starting out. 
but my business was going to be custom business solutions. So I thought there was an opportunity here. I was going to build um, SharePoint. SharePoint was going to be a core a custom Ooh. solution. In <laughs> my, do you know Microsoft InfoPath? Good Lord, you got some bullets out of this, didn't you? It's a good thing they brought you Power BI. <laughs> Microsoft InfoPath, Excel VBA, and Power Pivot. I was going to, anyone that needed a custom bespoke solution, I was going to build that. that and my, my company was called Accelerator CBS, Accelerator Custom Business Solutions. But very quickly, what I realized was that the opportunity was Power Pivot for Excel at the time. And so I did a lot of training on that and then, you know, it's evolved into Power BI. So then I changed to Accelerator BI. But the point is that I've been training people to use Power Pivot, Power Query, Power BI for nearly eight years now. And what I've learned is that you actually, you should learn the tools separate to your domain expertise. So I also have engineers, I have accountants, I have um people from um, from supply chain. Um, I've had people doing, uh, I'm currently working with a client in the US that um, analyzes water infiltration. You know, like I've all of these weird and wonderful backgrounds of people, but, but when it's time to learn the tool, my view is you should focus on learning the tool in an inert way. So, don't try and apply your domain to the learning process. And so for that reason, I teach using the AdventureWorks database, which is a retail database. And the reason I do that is because even though um, not everyone is into sales, which is what AdventureWorks is, everyone goes shopping, right? So everyone knows what it's like to walk into a bike shop and grab a bike and a water bottle and go and pay for it at the register. Right, so people can understand the transactional nature of that database. So, so I prefer to teach by separating whether you're a finance person or a water infiltration specialist from the technical skills of learning the tool. Once you understand the foundations of the skills that are required, then it's time to work out how to apply that to your particular domain. So that, that's my approach. Yeah, I actually do similar, um, although I, I don't use the AdventureWorks data set. I actually have a, a custom data set that I've built, which is all about food and beverage, because I have similar okay. philosophy is, right, teach you in, in something you, uh, you may not understand all of the metrics of how the industry works, but one thing that I can generally guarantee is that whether or not you actually consume these products, most people can relate to burgers and beer. Right. Yeah. I mean, those are the two things that they just go together and, and whatnot. And uh, that's the, the fun side of it is you can sort of look at it. And the cool thing is, though, I think, and this is one of the things that I think is important about what we do, Matt, is that the data that we use is all near real world examples. Right. I mean, it's real world stuff that's been changed to protect the guilty and the innocent so that when people are looking at it, it, it comes with in often cases, I mean, particularly if you look at something like the Power Query Academy, the data samples we give you get, have real world warts and real world problems that you've got to deal with. It's not clean right when you show up. That's that's kind of the point. So, you know, we, we yeah. like to make sure that we're giving you stuff that you're going to see and you're going to run into in the real world so that then you can adapt it to your own solutions, which is, yeah. that's where you're really learning. So I think I want to sort of come back to, you know, this concept of using data that, you know, you might not understand the industry or the terminology. So in the food and beverage industry, they have an incidence calculation where they say, so in McDonald's, for example, they'll say for every 100 burgers that we sell, how many Cokes do we sell? How many apple pies do we sell? And then they, they basically say if burgers are the, um, the opportunity, what if I could sell, if I'm selling for every 100 burgers, I'm selling 50 beverages. What if I could sell 51 beverages? What would that do to my business? All right. So now this is an industry domain concept, but the point is you don't have to understand it. That's the point that you made, Kent. Now, the other thing is that if you're going to be a data analyst, you've got to have that brain. And I, and I want to talk about this concept that, that Rob Colley talks about. He calls it the data gene. All right. So you, you have to be sort of wired in a certain way. And this is why I use the term curious but you have to have a natural affinity and a natural curiosity for data. And I would expect that people that um, are like that could quite quickly and easily um, adapt and understand these concepts from a different industry domain. And we'll probably find it quite interesting and, and, uh, and challenging to learn those things as well. So 
um, you know, I just don't think everyone in the world can be a data analyst. I use the I used the example before of Marius on the uh, Vertipak team. Now, I'm not trying to be critical of Marius. I mean, I wish I had the guy's brain. But the point is not everyone has the right um, makeup to become a data analyst. So actually, one of the, the first things I think you should do is actually say, do I love data? Am I curious about data, right? Because if, if you don't bounce out of bed and want to get working on that report, then maybe, maybe it's not right for you. Yeah, um, I, I would say, I mean, it's, you know, there's, I think there's an innate curiosity that goes into to dead lines. I agree. Um, you know, for, for me, one of the biggest things is it's, it's always wanting to know why, what drives this, what, what, what's behind the scenes here? What can I learn from this? What can I dig out of it? Can I expand this? Can I, can I do whatever? And, and things like that. Um, you know, sometimes I, I'll, I'll sit there and I'll look at the stuff that I'm doing. I'm going, man, I've asked why more times than a two year old. Okay. Well, I'm in the right spot, right? Like that, that's what being an analyst actually is. But the deal is when you can actually come back and you can get an answer, that's what it's all about. Right. So, yeah. um, and that's where, you know, learning the skills on how to do this stuff becomes super important as well. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we talked before about the, the blog article I wrote, I mean, no need to go back to that, but there, there was one other point that I had on there that I just think might need a little bit of clarification. And that is that I, my point number five is that you should be good at customer service. And I just want to explain this. Um, so point five, they'd be great at customer service. Because at the end of the day, a data analyst is a service provider. You are an internal, typically an internal customer service provider to someone in the business, someone that doesn't have your skills, knowledge, experience, someone who typically they may be uh, more senior to you. It's very typical to be more senior to you. And they need you and your specialist skills and your tenacity to help them interpret the problem and solve, help them solve problems which um, may need some action to, to execute improvements and stuff like that. And so you sort of have to be able to treat that person that you're providing this customer service to as it was your customer. And what some of the skills of customer service are to you know, understand their needs, but sometimes you've got to push back. So good people at customer service will say, hey, um, hello, senior manager, I know that's what you're asking me for, but is that really what you need? I mean, have you considered this? Have you considered that? Senior manager says, wow, I never thought about that before. You know, I really love working with you, data analyst, because, you know, you challenge me, you stretch me, you give me what I need, not what I ask for. And, and, and so this is, I just think it's something that perhaps the average data analyst doesn't think about. They don't think about them being themselves being a customer service provider, but I really believe yeah. it's a fundamental I, I part I gotta of tell it. you, funny example, this is this is gonna make Jeff, uh, uh, Jeff Weir, who I know is listening with us right now, he's, he's gonna fall off his chair with us, but I remember working with uh, with somebody uh, years past and you got the, um, okay, well, thanks Ken for building up this report, but it needs one more thing, it just needs a pie chart. And uh -huh. again, wait, what? It needs a pie chart well, what is it you're trying to show, right? And this is this is where you get into that, you know, you're right. I mean, you need to have enough knowledge in, uh, in your own domain. You need to be able to answer the questions, but you also need to go back and say, look, um, you actually don't need a pie chart. That's not gonna help you visualize what you need here. You need to come up with something that does a better job. Let me give you one of these. And, you know, every now and then you might have to go back and actually say, look, you know what, it's, it's a career shortening move if you refuse to put out the pie chart. So you got to put out the pie chart too. But, you know, you try and give them some other things along the way to say, look, here, I I've given you what you asked for, but I've also experimented and come up with a couple of other things that I, I think actually answer more relevant problems or answer the question you're, you're asking in a different way that provides different clarity. And, yeah. uh, you know, it, but it's that that I don't know I mean the knowledge has to be there but also the confidence to be able to try different things and and obviously everybody's manager is different and reacts differently to these things but you know it, it is mm. an important piece to be able to come back and say look I mean you know my job is here, I'm here to help you but I'm trying to help you be better even than what you asked for and I think that's where you sort of go with your your customer service aspect yeah yeah it. so it's a bit of it's a bit of front 
and a bit of confidence to be able to have those conversations. All right, look, I'm just conscious of the time. We've ticked over to the half hour. We said this was going to be a half hour. Do we have a slide on? Because we've got a special going, um, and so this, this will be available, recorded later on. But we've only got a day to go. So, uh, so this is our Black Friday special. So there's a QR code if you want to get there quickly. We do have 20% off all of our training courses, all of our books at the moment at Skillways Training. I think that literally has got another 24 hours to go, something like that. Ken. Yeah, something close to, um, yeah. Yeah, so um, if, if you want to learn from us, we'd love to have you over. We also have a, um, a forum. We have a private forum within Skillwave. So anyone that is um, actively subscribed in one of our courses can come in and basically ask us anything and uh, on our private forum. So we'd love to see you over there. Anything from you, Ken, before we go? Uh, you know what, the one thing I just want to throw out there, Matt, is that, I mean, you know, we, we've obviously got a lot of different products out there, but I think the ones that uh, that we would probably have to say that we're proud of stuff is that, you know, both Matt and I actually have programs that involve not just, um, you know, your, your on-demand stuff, but also involve coaching as well, where you uh, where you get to interact with us. Um, so, yeah. you know, if... if uh, if you like that thing, that's your jam, then uh, definitely you should check out some of these offers. And, um, you know, they, uh, Black Friday is a great time to actually pick up a discount on one of those kind of courses. So. Yeah. Okay. Last comment from me. We've got this Ask Me Anything session next week on December yeah, yeah. the 9th. So I forgot about that. I'm not sure what day that is. It must be a Thursday or something like that's that. Right, so yeah. everyone so that's, anyone everyone that's subscribed that's five, to one you're of the in courses. This yeah, yeah you, you pick up a Black Friday special, you get a bonus to actually have an Ask Me Anything session with uh, with Matt and I. And those ones, we will take technical questions and whatnot. Absolutely, um, absolutely. So that'll be that'll right. to challenge us. <laughs> Terrific. All right, Ken, well, good to chat. Um, hopefully this has been useful for for you. Um, thanks for joining us. And yeah. And, I think uh, we'll do it again. I like it. Yeah, and I'd like to say, I mean, if uh, if you're if you're watching this and you enjoy it, um, please do me a favor, uh, or do all of us a favor, throw throw some comments in the chat and let us know that uh, that you'd like to see more. Good idea. That helps us make our decisions. What and, topics um, do you want to see? What yeah, topics what do you topics want to see us talk about? We, and Ken, Ken and I like topics, so we don't need to prepare a lot, right, Ken? Yeah. <laughs> so, <yeah>, the <laughs> exactly. There you go. All right. Awesome. Good see to you, see Ken. you again, Matt. And uh, we'll see you next time, folks. Bye.